right. Uh, thanks so much for having us here. And um, I'm really happy to have this opportunity to share uh, what's going on in Japan and help the audience to you know, uh, learn a little bit more about the Japanese market, what's going on. And as, as Sebastian said, I believe there's a lot of interest in Japanese market, um, yet it's really hard to understand and learn what's going on really, right? So um, I'm, I'm thrilled to have awesome panelists today uh, who is who are super well connected in Japanese crypto market. I'm pretty sure um, if you connected any of you know, one of any of these three panels, uh, you will be able to you know, connect anyone in Japanese crypto market. Um, so let me quickly introduce uh, the panelist uh, the, from, from Ken Kawai. Uh, he's a partner and a lawyer at AMT Anderson uh, Morita Motsune, which is one of the top uh, law firms in Japan. This is not the blockchain dedicated law firms, but in general, uh, law firms, huge uh, and, and prestigious law firm. Um, he has been focusing on the, the finance market, and recently he has been in the, in the focusing on the blockchain and crypto space as well. Uh, and Tomo uh, is a CEO at Tech Tech, uh, which is a blockchain uh, startup in Japan. So they are providing a lot of uh, services uh, regarding, uh, regarding blockchain, and one of them uh, including POL, uh, proof of learning. Um, I'm, I highly recommend you guys to, to go to the homepage and check out what's, what, what it is. Um, it's really fascinating and fun, uh, the service. And he partner, and as I mentioned, he the tech tech providing a lot of uh, different services, and and because of the they partner with uh, multiple projects, including uh, Kyber Network, Brave, and and um, and MakerDAO. Lastly, uh, Wataru, um, uh, he's a, a senior research and DMM, uh, which is a Japanese uh, a con uh, conglomerate. Um, they are providing a lot of uh, services, uh, both in blockchain and non-blockchain space. Uh, in the blockchain space, they are providing, for example, uh, DMM at Bitcoin, which is exchange, um, and and uh, many other uh, services. So Wataru uh, wrote is he is he's a uh, very um, experienced and um, um, developer as well as and writing. Uh, two blockchain development books in Japan. Unfortunately, you guys are not able to check it because it's written in Japanese, but um, if you know anyone who is interested in learning blockchain in Japanese, um, and he's the guy to talk. So, uh, oh yeah, lastly, my, uh, myself. Uh, my name is Young Rakim. I work for Recruit uh, Stretch Partners, which is a, uh, Recruit is a Japanese conglomerate. Uh, we are a $55 billion market cap company, uh, and uh, we are parent company Indeed.com, Glassdoor, um, and so on and so. I am a um, venture investment team at Recruit and covering blockchain and few other areas. Again, um, I'm super happy to have this opportunity today. Um, so, uh, first question uh, is going to be, I think we would like to understand what's the difference between Japan and us of Japan. So, uh, Ken-san, can you um, share what do you think is the difference between Japan, outside of Japan, what's the misunderstanding, et cetera, et cetera? So, um, in the U.S., China, Israel, maybe in Russia, uh, there are lots of uh, blockchain startup, startup has emerged. On the contrary, um, those who are leading the Japanese blockchain scene is a big institutions like NTT, Big Telecom Giant, and uh, uh, Nomura, or maybe Hitachi, or these very renowned guys. So uh, most of the engineers uh, belong to these big entities to develop blockchain. And they are a bit conservative, or maybe much, much conservative than the startups. So, uh, they don't like to reveal the things uh, so fast. So this is the one thing. So this is the difference between Japan and uh, other countries. And the other thing is that what is a virtue in Japan is that Japan has a very big crypto population, uh, from the, especially from the perspective of tradings. Japan is known to be a... Uh, number one FX margin trading country, and most of, uh, many of the users also have the accounts in Japanese exchange or overseas exchange of cryptos. So 
in that sense, uh, uh, there is a huge, uh, the burst uh, market in Japan. This is the, uh, uh, f uh, the major difficult uh, differences between Japan and other, con other countries. Yeah, I mean, just to add one more thing is, uh, as a corporate venture investor, I had opportunity to go to a board meeting of a US startup and board meeting of Japanese startup. Dominantly in Japanese board, startup board meeting, most of the people are from corporate, corporate investors. So it shows how corporate, how you know, influential the corporations in Japanese market. Yeah. tomo san yeah. what do you think? Yeah, uh, hi everyone, my name is Tomo from TechTech. Uh, I'd like to hear about uh, some point of startups. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to hear about this investment situation for startups in Japan. Yeah, I feel that the uh, investment situation for startups that are challenging in cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, is getting worse year by year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there were many exchange hacking incidents in Japan uh, last year and this year. Yeah, so uh, Japanese most uh, venture capital don't invest in blockchain industry uh, startups. So uh, I, I feel that uh, Japanese start, uh, blockchain startups uh, is decreasing year by year. So, but, but uh, however, uh, I think that uh, foreign investors can freely uh, choose choose their startups, uh, choose the uh, investment destination. Yes. That's fascinating. Thank you, uh, Wataru-san. What, what about you? Hi, uh, hi, I'm Wataru. Uh, uh, in Japan, uh, uh, there have been uh, uh, many, uh, many, many cases of uh, floods, uh, and that builds a negative image uh, uh, of, of the uh, crypto world. Uh, many people have lost a lot of money, and uh, uh, many elders have been targeted uh, of these cases uh, have been largely uh, discussed by the Japanese media. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, hacking incidents uh, happened. So for these reasons, uh, uh, the new laws and uh, regulations have been established uh, in order to uh, protect the customers. Uh, in the uh, retail market. So, but uh, still many people uh, are interested in uh, buying new financial products. Yeah, um, so two of panelists mentioned about fraud and hacking, um, but um, I, I think it's 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 the fact that already happened, but um, I believe it is uh, that actually raised awareness uh, of how important the security is. And I know a lot of exchanges are working really hard to to you know improve uh, the security on an exchange. So about those changes like hacking, and you mentioned the differences between um, the crypto uh, retail market and, and crypt, uh, the corporations do dominance of corporations. Why do you think is that? that kind of difference is happening. Yeah, I can say. Okay. Yeah, uh, so maybe one of the reasons is that uh, the characteristics of the Japanese are a little bit different from that in the US. So uh, Japanese people are more conservative than the US ones. So this is one of the reasons why. But actually, uh, there's another, another reason is that in Japan, uh, uh, there is a Cryptocurrency specific crypto, uh, specific regulations applicable to cryptos. It started two and a half years ago. I found it may be a bit too early to introduce regulations uh, in early 2017, but actually there is. So uh, in, it's very important to comply comply with the regulations. So. Uh, that makes a big, big change, a big difference between the other countries and the e uh, other countries. Uh, most other countries don't, don't have crypto regulations right now. Can you tell me what 
why and how Japanese regular letters, uh, you know, moved so quickly in 2017 to build uh, um, the the re legal framework for crypto. So at first, uh, uh, FATF. Oh, this year FATF recommendation has changed uh, to include more virtual asset service providers to be regulated. But actually. Uh, they started this incentive back in 2015 or 16. And uh, in this country, there are lots of regulators there, CFTC, SEC, states regulators. It's, very, it's not easy to have the consensus. And in China, each local government has the power to do that. So the Japan has only single regulator, the FSA, the Financial Services Agency, so it was easy for them to uh, take steps. Uh, of course, they would like to balance between the innovation yeah. and consumer protection, and of course, the anti-money laundering matters. So uh, they, their aim is to promote innovation and also would like to protect users. So sometimes, if some wrong things happens, like hacking, then uh, the balance between the uh, protection and innovation towards moves towards to the protection. But uh, uh, but of course, uh, uh, still uh, they would like to see more innovation. So and the Japanese. It was very recently uh, we are going to have the updates of the regulations uh, and that is welcomed by the traditional financial institutions like Nomura, Mitsubishi, Mizuho, these guys. So, so the crypto market inevitably moves to the more regulated environment in every country. Uh, I'm not too sure the timeline is, but actually, the Japan is uh, leading these changes. I think. Actually, I didn't even know that. You know, I, I knew there's FSA, but I didn't know FS is the only, only you know, the body to to define and uh, regulate the, the market. So it makes sense, you know, to have only single player to uh, control the regulation. Cool. Tomo-san, what, what about you? What do you think about uh, why? Why the, the oh yeah, I uh, I think the, the Japanese market is very big, but uh, this means cryptocurrency, not blockchain. Yeah, so uh, many Japanese people recognize, uh, still recognize that uh, blockchain is cryptocurrency, but uh, and as I said earlier, uh, there were many exchange hacking incidents. So the impression that the cryptocurrency is dangerous and uh, have significant business risk has uh, has formed, so the, that, that's why the Japanese blockchain industry doesn't grow up. So let me follow. Ask one more follow question. So yes, people are more getting more uh, cautious or conservative. Uh, when you say people, I'm sorry, the corporations or or companies are getting more cautious and conservative when mm -hmm. it comes to blockchain because of the, a lot of problems we had. But I think that's not only in Japan, but also happening around the world. What do you think about the retail investors or the people who are not uh, necessarily working in the blockchain space? Uh, do you think they are also raising concern or um, there is no really change um, toward the blockchain or crypto? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what you mean is uh, outside, outside industry don't come to Blockchain industry. Well, my sorry, this is my. I rephrase my question. Do you think uh, the the retail people, like uh, the regular people, I would say, um, are like moving away from blockchain, or do you think they are still stay, or or the population is getting increased? Oh, mm, oh, oh, sorry, I I I don't understand what what you say. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so do you think is the people the crypto people is increasing? Or decreasing in Japan? Uh, mm, Japanese market uh, is decreasing, but uh, uh, in the mm, people are uh, decreasing. Yeah, market is dec increasing and people are decreasing. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. So, going back to my original question to Otoro san, uh, what do you think about the difference? 
why why the difference? Oh, why uh, why as uh, as I said earlier, uh, Japanese people still think uh, still recognize uh, blockchain is cryptocurrency, but uh, in a separate uh, market, blockchain market and uh, cryptocurrency market. I see. Yeah. So blockchain market is um, growing, but yeah, yeah, not yeah, necessarily right, crypto right, market. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so what are some so we, we talk about the difference uh, between Japan and Australia of Japan, right? Uh, what, why, what, what do you think is, is the reason uh, there is a difference between Japan and Australia of Japan? Oh, uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, there, there are some reasons. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, Japanese people uh, like gambling. <laughs> gambling. So uh, and uh, uh, they tend to spend a lot of money on uh, lotteries and uh, different types of uh, gambling. Oh. So you know, uh, uh, in Japan, uh, there is a famous gambling. Oh, uh, its name is pachinko. Oh. The pachinko, yeah. uh, which, which market is uh, very large and is over, over about uh, uh, 200 billion dollars. So um, second, uh, uh, the Japanese uh, inconsistent economic policy. Uh, so Japanese, uh, Japanese economy has not grown uh, during the past 30 years. Uh, uh, banks' uh, interest rate is uh, not good. So uh, that, that's why uh, Japanese people uh, prefer uh, 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 low, uh, uh, short-time investments. Uh, uh, so also uh, uh, Japanese people uh, uh, think uh, that uh, cliff trading and uh, foreign exchange trading uh, are the same thing. So it's gambling. I see. Um, yeah, I don't have any comments on the gambling part, but uh, uh, if I can add one more things, the why the difference is happening between Japan and outside of Japan. I think it is not only for Japan, uh, the blockchain space. Um, historically, um, as you know, uh, the startup scene in Japan is not necessarily uh, big enough compared to their entire GDP, um, com uh, GDP, right? And I think the, the the reason why it is happening is because, fortunately and unfortunately, Japan is big enough country. Um, these days, as everyone knows, uh, not many we, we don't hear a lot of business or economy news around Japan market, right? But still, Japan is the third biggest uh, country by GDP, and it's. 10th or 11th or 9th biggest country by population. So for example, there's no country in Europe which is bigger than Japan by, by population. So it is a huge country. So they were self-sustainable so far, um, but um, as, you, as we all know, the paradigm is shifting and, and they are they, they are getting attacks outside of Japan a lot. Chinese company, US company, even in Korean company. Um, so I think it's a really interesting moment um, that now finally Japanese corporations or investors or startups people are, have a motivation to outside of Japan to compete with with people outside of Japan and um, yeah. So yeah, let me uh, switch a, a gear a little bit here. So I think we some some of us uh, talk about a, a little bit of regulation. So um, Ken San, can you uh, explain what kind of regulation change we have a big uh, regulation change upcoming? regulation change next year, so can you explain a little bit more about it? Yeah. So, uh, as I said earlier, the Japan has a crypto currency regulations started from uh, April 2017. So uh, the, aim, the aim is to protect consumers and also preventing the money laundering. This this is the two main areas. So 
currently all of the exchanges, OTC dealers, or token issuers must be registered with the Financial Services Agency of Japan, JFSA, to conduct business. Currently, there are 19 exchanges uh, licensed, including Bitflyer, Liquid, CoinCheck, DMM, these guys. So, and OTC traders uh, also need to be registered. And uh, as for the uh, token issuer, uh, if you would like to sell the token directly to Japanese residents, then you must have, you must undergo the registration with the FSA. But you, you can, uh, the token issuer can outsource the token sales to the license exchange. In that case, you don't, uh, the token issuer don't, token issuers are not necessarily be registered. So, in that sense, all the ICOs are IEOs in a sense. So uh, they need to go to the uh, license exchange first, and uh, the license exchange do the due diligence of the tokens. So this is the current rule, and uh, what? And uh, we are going to have the revision of the rules next year. The bill has already passed a diet, and it will be. It will come into force next spring, most likely from the 1st of April. So currently, custodial, custody business is not regulated. But uh, because of the FATF recommendation earlier this year, uh, the Japan is going to introduce custodial regulations. So custodial wallet provider needs to be registered with the FSA. And uh, of course, uh, uh, only the so software provider, non-custodial wallet, uh, can do the business without the registration. But uh, if you'd like to do custodian for the institutions, so like, uh, let's say, Anchorage, Coinbase, these guys are providing that kind of services, uh, then if they would like to have the Japanese clients, then they need to be registered with, with the FSA. So, uh, and... Uh, the area that is not regulated is crypto asset lending. Of course, the fiat money lending is regulated, but crypto asset lending is not regulated. So, uh, in the context of DeFi, uh, there, these days, uh, lots of uh, crypto lending companies are emerging, but they can do the business in Japan as well uh, without any license. So, and also, the derivatives is going to be regulated. So, uh, in Japan, currently, the crypto derivatives uh, is mostly the CFDs, but it's not regulated. But uh, uh, including these kind of things, and also, uh, let's say, the Ether, Bitcoin swap, or ERC-20 swaps uh, would be regulated, mostly similar to the cross-currency swaps. And the last thing is that we are going to have the tokenized securities role. So I think this is the first in the world, yeah, to introduce that kind of, yeah. uh, the fund's interest, or uh, let's say, uh, it is called uh, investment contract here. Uh, uh, these uh, tokens will be specifically treated in our securities law, and uh, currently the FSA is uh, creating the guidelines, so uh, we shall see uh, what would be the difference between the traditional securities and the new one? Uh, it is called electronic recorded transferable rights. It's very difficult to explain and say that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so this is a specific one. So just one question about this uh, securitized uh, tokenization. Does it mean, so as long as token is securitized um, and treated as a, a securities, uh, people or projects uh, outside of Japan can uh, list or sell uh, the tokens in Japan? So, of course, there's a difference between the private offering and the uh, public offering. So, uh, we have also the exemptions for the uh, private offering, but if you are going to do the public offering, you need to uh, make the uh, you need to be registered uh, with the FSA first, and it's very. And of course, you need to do the uh, timely disclosure or the uh, ad hoc disclosures. It's uh, 
basically the same with the traditional yeah, IPOs. But of course, I, it's a kind of mini IPO, I should right, say. Right, right. Yeah. And actually, this, after uh, the FSA uh, uh, announced the regulatory change, then I have lots of, yeah, the lots of traditional financial institutions mm -hmm. ask me advice is they, so Nomura uh, recently announced that they are going to establish a digital asset trading platform from next year. And uh, I cannot say, say the name, but other big institutions are also uh, creating that kind of things right now. And, uh, That's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, so it's very exciting. So the first, I think the first thing is, so the real estate related uh, security tokens and also the corporate bond type, so I should say digitalized corporate bonds uh, is the first target uh, for them. Wow, okay. Not really, uh, corporate loans it could be, yeah, it could be them, but uh, mostly bonds and notes, yeah, they're interesting. Great, yeah. So, and also, in the U.S., how we test applicable to the tokens, so it's vague whether your token is considered a securities or not, but Japan's rule is very simple. If the entity issue a uh, pay the dividends or make the profit sharing, then your token is a security. If you don't do any anything like that, then it is going to be considered as cryptocurrency. So most of the tokens is considered as cryptocurrency, and the cryptocurrencies regulations are applicable. Oh, this is this is a Japanese rule, and we we also have the next slide. Oh, oh no, okay. We have the specific rule that we have a single SRO called JVCA, Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association. All of the leg uh, registered entities are the members. So in order to do the, they have the specific rules uh, for the token listing or the token sales. So in line with this in line with these self regulations, every uh, exchanges uh, do the due diligence of the token issuer and the tokens itself called review. Then uh, they need to get the approval from the JVCA. So this is the procedures. So it finally goes to the FSA. And uh, last night, uh, yesterday, a coin check announced that they are going to list Stella uh, for the first time in to in Japan. So. Uh, for the last one and a half year, the new things have stopped, but uh, uh, we are going to see the big change uh, from here, I think. Do you think we have a lot more tokens listed uh, starting Stella? Yeah, so uh, each exchange has uh, tokens in their pipeline right now. So, of course, uh, the JVCA's capacity is limited, so uh, maybe one month, so two or three tokens per month. That I'm uh, I'm accepting. That's yeah. Good pace, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, what do you think? I mean, is this is a question to everyone. So, so we obviously we have a big change, uh, as as Kim described. What do you think is the biggest implication of this change? What who is going to get benefit most, and and uh, what what we should be prepared? Tomo. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm not a regulatory expert. So I'd like to talk briefly. Yes, uh, I, th I feel that the Japanese government enacted the regulation on cryptocurrency very early, as I said, Kawai uh, Ken-san explained. So uh, uh, even now, uh, regulation revision is ongoing. Uh, this is very proud. Yes, but uh, however, the new bill uh, passed in May this year. So has a, has become a demanding for startups. So uh, Japanese many uh, many Japanese startups working on blockchain industry, but I I feel that uh, uh, many Japanese startups are restricted is by uh, is restricted by cryptocurrency regulation. 
So I, f I think that the Japanese government should get a little more feedback from startups. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I think that's something Ken-san can do. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about uh, Shinohara-san? Our, our regulations uh, represent uh, uh, current social issues and um, cannot be ignored or broken. Uh, uh, it is true uh, that uh, uh, the new regulations uh, will make the startup business more difficult. Uh, 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 but I believe uh, there is still a chance for startups. So uh, if we uh, solve the social issues, uh, uh, we will be able to create the basis of the future crypto market. Yeah, I mean, to add one more thing is, I, I personally, I think this regulation is very fascinating to, and, and help, it's gonna help you know, overseas projects or, or startups to open the door to Japanese market in a compliant way. Um, although there's limited things, but um, I think it's a good starting point um, for to have more um, interactions between Japan and also the Japan market. So let me switch uh, to the final question. Uh, we are running out of time. So what do you advise to the projects or company who are interested in getting into Japanese market? Yeah, so uh, as we talked, uh, we have a, a very good population and the economy, and uh, there are, yeah, you have a lot, lot of room to play. But uh, in Japan, uh, it's very important. So in, in order to understand the difference between the culture and regulations, uh, I recommend you to tie up with Japanese partners. So it is most important most important thing is to find a good partner. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, let's say, for instance, Securitize very recently invested by the uh, MUFG, MUFG the, uh, the biggest financial conglomerate, and from Mitsui Real Estate, the number one real estate company in Japan. So uh, that kind of uh, collaboration would work better in Japan. So, uh, uh, and also, as we talked, so uh, currently we don't have very good solutions. So, for instance, there are lots of good custodian emerging, but there's no good custodian in Japan. In Japan, so if they can provide their technology, software, or white label, so with the Japanese renowned institutions like plus banks, then it would work. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, either of uh, either of you guys, do you have anything to add? Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. I th I think it is important to collaborate with which startup. Uh, Japan has uh, unique culture and language, so uh, it will be difficult to enter the Japanese market alone. So, yeah, and the most important thing is to hold a meetup on site. So, uh, <coughs> by holding such a meetup uh, on site, you can uh, create an enthusiastic community, and the community uh, voluntarily spreads the projects. So, uh, uh, our company is uh, currently collaborating with famous projects around the world, for example, Brave, uh, MakerDAO Kaiba Network, and so on. So uh, we have a several content of collaboration. Uh, the first, uh, we co-create some curriculums that can run how they use blockchain. And the second, uh, we support our partners, Japanese marketing and public relations. So, uh, <coughs> uh, okay, uh, there are a few Japanese companies like us uh, that are collaborating with famous projects around the world. So uh, last message, uh, if you are interested in Japanese market, let's talk after this session. Thank you. Um, I think we are running out of time. Do you have a like, quick uh, comment or? Oh, 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 mo uh, most Japanese people uh, cannot speak uh, uh, fluent English. Oh, 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 language is a big uh, limitation. Uh, it's like a wall, um, but uh, 
people、uh, would like to know、uh, more about、uh, the new fascinating crypto products.、Uh, so don't be afraid of the、uh, regulation in Japan. So we have a、uh, uh, bright future.、Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys.、Um, and thanks for the audience for,、uh, for joining the session. So we, are, we, will, we will be hanging out outside. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.